C'est beau, n'est-ce pas C'est Montmartre, pas du tout, c'est la Tour Eiffel. Nous sommes à la place du Trocadéro avec Sealers Magazine. Je suis John Sealers et nous attendons aujourd'hui Sarah Landry avec qui nous allons passer 24 heures et espérer de lui faire découvrir les joies de la ville de Paris. Achetons une petite Tour Eiffel là, tiens. We are speaking English now. We are with the magnificent Sarah Landry. We are going to uh, show her the beauty of Paris. Not the touristic part, of course, the touristic part. This is going to be very touristic. Um, do you speak French? Um, <laughs> that, that's, the old, that's about that's it. That, that's yeah. about it. So this is the first stop. And we are going to spend 24 hours with Sarah Landry. Well, a little bit less. <laughs> a little bit less. We're gonna get weird. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Bonjour! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you're French? I mean, Londres, yeah. yeah. Right, people like to do their relationship and they put their yeah. stuff on the lock, and then the idea is that you'll last forever if there's a lock, right? Yeah, right. But isn't it a problem with some of the bridges yep. where there's so much weight that clamps. they're like, they have to clamp yeah. them because the bridge would collapse? Yeah, uh, just try, the government sorry. ruined my relationship. <laughs> How would you describe uh, the, the techno scene from Texas and uh, from USA in general? I, mean, I think that it is in the beginning stages. Yeah. It's uh, really early there and I think that that's because um, it's not nearly as ubiquitous as it is here, like it's everywhere here. And most Americans, especially most Americans that are into electronic music, don't have the experience or the luxury of going to events like we see them here in Europe. You know, there's promoters in LA and uh, 6AM group in LA and others, and then uh, basement in New York. So there's pockets of the scene that are really starting to grow in yeah. the US, and I think that over the course of the next four or five years, the genre is absolutely going to explode. Yeah. You're contributing to be a pioneer of this uh, genre in, in, in the US. Yeah, I really like the hard sounds. And of course, yeah. techno was born in the queer and black communities in Detroit. Yeah, sure. And so I love uh, the idea of, of feeling like I'm contributing to yeah. this like rebirth or revamp. Exactly. Bringing it back. Of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bringing things back to the States and, you know, turning the US back into this like pioneering hub like a looping the loop exactly yeah because yeah. i think you know techno took root here in europe and really yeah. just exploded sure. and then for some reason in the u.s it just became something else and so i think i think the history of the genre and everything bringing that back is like something that i really like and you uh, you made your first gig in europe in madrid madrid yeah with yeah. blackworks yeah so how do you uh, do you compare the your gigs in U the US and your gigs in Europe, like in Madrid, that like you did. Like, yeah. In terms of like the crowds, I know the crowd in Madrid was fucking insane. Yeah. They were amazing. I had the best time. You know, they knew what they were getting into. They were ready for it. And it was just like... Bring it on. Yeah, hammer the whole time, <laughs> right? So, But of course, like the rave energy in Europe is just on another level. I have ha had a lot of really wonderful gigs mm. in the US where that kind of feeling yeah. that I feel here when I play here does it's a similar feeling in the US which is really cool. Come on board the Bateau Mouche. Thank you for choosing our company to discover Paris from the set. I love, I love how they're like, we're gonna put kids on this place. You know what this bridge that. needs? Little comment. It's fucking cold. <laughs> That's my comment. <laughs> how about that? Oh. Yeah, I do. I do. Don't take pictures of my house. Well, 
do inside. So, so. What did you see? What did you learn? We saw a lot of very ornate buildings. Yeah. We saw the bridge with the tits. The bridge with the tits. <laughs> really important. The bridge with the tits. Uh, much like uh, Notre Dame. We Notre Dame. on the outside and are broken on the, in the inside. <laughs> and burn uh, the fuck down in the inside. Out. <laughs> Needs work on the inside. Uh, Nothing right behind side. you. Like I don't know. Oh really? The oh. fuck is this? Funny. You know what? You know what? We gave her too much time. Now she's a bit, uh, being a bitch, you know? Fuck you, fuck that! All about me. All about me and the boys <laughs> and my pretty legs. <laughs> now we're going to go back to the hotel yeah. and a little wine, a little beer maybe, a I don't coca know. Coca-Van. A, a coca You want a coca <laughs> Yeah, alright. Alright, let's go. But I'm not smart enough to understand. As a French tradition, we're going to make her taste some pinot doc and some croissant and chocolatine. Oh, sorry, no chocolat. Since my mouth has already been on this, right. and we are technically still in a health crisis, we're going to be responsible. That's very true. And we're going to let the glassware very true. take the back burner in favor of public health. That's very true. Thanks, Sarah. Cheers. 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 I don't know if it's good. Huh? It is. It is. It is good. That's nice. Yeah. Oh. It's good. That's quite nice. It's quite nice. Uh, it's not for the video. I really like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. And I love it so much. I want to take a picture. No? Yeah, yeah. I very, know. I know. This is a very like uh, French film moment happening right here. I'll take whatever you want. So we're gonna do a bite of the croissant first. Yeah, sure. And then I'll do a bite of the pan chocolat, and yeah. I'm gonna leave the pan chocolat, and I'm gonna finish it and be grateful to you <laughs> when I get back from yeah, the show. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's now a YouTube uh, taste uh, a challenge. <laughs> channel. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong with carbs and butter, truly. Yeah. Well, you can though. Ah, oh, that's true, but the French never get it wrong. Because or else you get hanged in the public place. <laughs> <laughs> you in the stocks. Damn it! I'm getting a bit jealous right now. Ah, I'm sorry, but you because you the, the fucking bed and you. you I don't care. You take the rest of it. So. Uh, since how long have you been producing music? Producing music, I've been producing for six and a half years. Six and a half, okay. I lost all of my 20s, which is like <laughs> the ages of like 22, 23 to 27 are just a blur of me being like this, you know, yeah. in front of my computer. It's best to develop a muscle memory, yeah. right, and explore yourself. So yeah. it's mostly like just the Ableton, right, the Ableton UI will haunt yeah. me forever. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just like, like imprinted <laughs> and th that's the next question you you exactly what i wanted to ask uh, what software do you use and what gear do you use if you use some gears i do have some i do have gear um i do have hardware i use a uh, live 11 ableton live 11 suite yeah okay um i actually was a beta tester oh, oh yeah, I, was sorry. A, I, was <laughs> I was a beta tester for so uh that version of ableton for the yeah. latest version which was really fun actually when i started producing I started in Logic because yeah. the, of the familiarity of like the Apple of course, interface. Of course, and then okay. once I got to the point where it was kind of about speed and efficiency, customization, right, workflow, yeah. I found that Ableton really does work well for me. Do you feel that you need this organi organization or sometimes you can go uh, rogue and go like, oh right, I will try something totally new and... Um, it's, a, it's a mixture. Like yeah. I have, so I, I have ADHD, right? And so yeah. I found that like for me ah, yeah. in life okay. in general, like it works for me to have a structure, yeah. an established structure, and then I can move freely and creatively. But like in terms of like my process of making a track and the way that I conceptualize things, that's pretty set in stone. Yeah. But then I change things up and add like flavors of variety with like new plugins yeah. or like using different VSTs or sampling my hardware sense yeah. that I have, which is a Moog Sub 37 and an Electron Digitone and an Electron or a Behringer Neutron and a Behringer TD3. And, then, right. and I have the Ableton Push, which I use the most. Is it important for you to put some uh, political beliefs in your music and in your art in general? 
Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm you a tell very. Us about a bit more. Oh yes, I can. <laughs> I, uh, I am a very, uh, I'm a very big feminist uh, to the surprise of no one, um, and I am also anti-fascist to the surprise of no one. Free the homies, fuck the cops. And um, I'm an environmentalist, but that doesn't really make it too much into mm -hmm. the music so far. And I am also into um, pagan, uh, matriarchal, let's call it religious practices. Yes. And so that sort of esoteric uh, yeah. vibe finds yeah, sure. its way into my tracks a lot as well. So, yes. <laughs> All right. So, Sarah, it was really, really nice to spend the day with you and talk with you. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. I had the best time with you guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And it's not over. It's no, not over. it's not. Cheers. Let's go Oosh. to the party. Bitch.